Hello guys and welcome for the second part of my guide for the combinations between the fire staff and the blunderbuss. As mentioned in part 1, we will take a deep dive into the two builds which I call the chaser for single targets and then the anti-heal which is for mass AoE anti-heal effects. As we all know, the blunderbuss is extremely strong weapon on close to mid range and can be used for one shot combos since it's released. Many people found out different use with the weapon even in heavy gear and different roles than assassin. Today I will show you two completely different builds which are extremely useful in the current meta. Let's start with the first one which I call the chaser. This is a build which is used mainly for chasing targets such as healers, bows, mages and basically all light or medium targets which can be bursted down by yourself alone or with the small help of your group. The idea is that you can apply pressure to the mentioned players by using the mobility of the fire staff and then to finish them off with the burst of the blunderbuss. Let's take a look at the skill tree for both weapons of this build so we can see which abilities and passives we will have to use. Let's start with the fire staff. As we can see the build of the fire staff and the abilities that we're gonna use are not so much different than the normal critical build that I'm using for my fire and ice. Of course there is one small change in which we are replacing the last passive of the pillar of fire with the passive on the right side which is called combat speed. As you can see this passive will grant you 10% haste for 5 seconds on ability usage. This means that we will be able to chase down targets even easier and this will allow us to stay on their back. Now let's take a look on the blunderbuss side and there is a little bit of differences with which you can play depending on what you prioritize more. Of course, we're gonna go with the net shot and all of its passives and take a note that the last passive is granting a bleed damage which means that this bleed damage cannot be mitigated with trust protection by your enemies. Then we would want to have the claw shot again with all of the passives necessary for it in order to get the maximum bonus and maximum damage. And then last but not least, your strongest ability is the shrapnel blast. Of course, again, we are going with all the passives in order to grant all the bonuses for it and of course to also open the unload ultimate spell on the left side. When we have this ultimate ability, this means that every ability that we cast will give us two more pallets, which is potentially a damage increase if we hit the target. Now for the other passives from the skill tree, there is, like I said, different combinations which you can use. There is a time where we were gonna play the blunderbuss more and you can go with the reload that gives you empower and also the reload that gives you haste. However, if you are not playing with the blunderbuss so much but you are chasing between the two weapons, then you can drop those two passives in order to get the two passives on the right side which will give you more cooldowns and of course fortify after triggering an ability. Take a note that there is different ways to cancel the animation of reloading and to slow yourself down. If you know how to do it properly you can save up a lot of time and you can use the blunderbuss combo whenever it's ready to be used again. This way you can keep up with the damage and at the same time to continue chasing targets so they don't get away from you. Now since we discussed the skill tree of the chaser build, let's take a look on the equipment and what we need to make it perfect. Let's start with the artifacts since they are the most important thing of any build in season 3. The first what we're gonna look at is the pestilence. This is the artifact for the blunderbuss and as you can see it's providing us a lot of damage. As we also know this artifact is reducing the enemy's healing effects so it would serve you perfect with this build. For last perk I would suggest you to go between the three perks either enchanted, attunement or keenly empowered but if I have to choose I would maybe go with enchanted. 
then of course the fire staff is again the same as the critical build which is keen, vicious and keenly empowered. However, I'm using this one because I don't have the necessary gear, so I would propose you to take a single target fire staff, which would be enchanted, attunement, and maybe a perk or keenly jacked. Then I would not go over the gear because I don't have the correct gear for this build, but we can talk about the food straps, which are the artifact for the armors. This artifact will provide us a lot of healing and empowering effects whenever we dodge an ability or an attack from an enemy. I think they are a perfect fit for this build and they would provide you a lot of benefits. For a third perk on them I would definitely go between either shirking heals or heal and I would boost my defensive stats to the maximum. Then. If we look into the jewelry pieces, I would definitely go with the same that I currently have and those will be an amulet with health, shirking and power and trust protection. If you don't feel safe around mages, maybe you can try to go with fire protection as well, but I think trust is a little bit better due to the fact that there is fire absorption potions. For the ring, I would definitely recommend you to take hearty fire damage and either refreshing or mortal empowerment depending on how you feel. If you feel that you can drop a lot of kills and keep up with the stacks, mortal empowerment would be the way to go. If however you want to have lower cooldowns and also to save some of the refreshing perks from your armor gear and you can place refreshing on your ring. For an earring, of course, I would go with the Endless Thirst because I still believe that this is the best earring for high damage and high pressure builds. The next thing that we have to look at, of course, is the gems and what we should slot in our armors and jewelries in order to mitigate the most damage from our enemies. As we all know, in Season 3, the meta changed a lot and a lot of the weapons also converted their damage into elemental. Therefore, I suggest you to go fully elemental protection in order to save yourself from different kinds of elemental damage. The easiest example that I can give is the Abyssal Great Axe, which now instead of slash damage does void. If I have to choose, I would go for 5 Rune Glass Opals on my armor pieces, which will give me a total of 10% elemental protection through all different elements. This will also benefit me a 10% fire damage which is counting towards my empower and it will increase both of the attacks from the fire staff and the blunderbuss. For the jewelries I would go for 2 emeralds which will give me a total of 10% trust protection and of course combine that with my amulet which is already giving me trust protection I will have a total of 25% trust. And of course the last spot of our jewelry can be used for either an extra opal for 2.5% for all elemental attacks or you can go for a single ruby or single void damage protection. Of course if you feel difficulties with a lot of slash or anything else you can do a little bit of change towards your gems. Last but not least, we have to talk about the rune and the heart rune of choice that we would go for this build. I would suggest you to go with the hearthstone because it's basically providing you a lot of defense. Since you're gonna play blunderbuss, this means that you would be closer to all the fights and therefore you can get in trouble really quick. Also with this build, you don't have a nice gauntlet to save you in different and tough situations. That's why I think the heart rune is really important to be stone form, but if you feel confident in you or your teammates, you can go with other variations. Good examples could be vines or the cannon blast. Even if you want to go deeper into enemies backline and healers, you can go as well with biobomb. And now, since we already discussed the weapons, the artifacts, all the jewelries and armor pieces plus their respective gems and perks. The only thing that we also have to take a look at is the attributes. So how we should distribute our attributes by using the fire staff and blunderbuss for the chaser build. 
I personally prefer to split my attributes as such. I go for 110 constitution, so whenever I use my health buff food, I would get to the 150 threshold, which will provide me a 10% critical damage mitigation. Then of course, I'm going for 350 intelligence for all the bonuses through all the thresholds and of course the last one that gives me 10% ability damage and this will apply to both my weapons. I prefer to go with 350 intelligence instead of 300 and put extra 50 points in strength because I believe that the 150 strength threshold is not giving the best bonus possible. The 15% stamina regen, while exhausted, it's not something to consider as you should always try to keep your stamina management on a level that you would never run out of stamina. That's why I put 100 points in strength which will give me the 10% physical bonus damage and this will increase the blunderbuss damage a lot. However, if you have all your weapons and armors, also the jewelries at 700, you would still have some extra points to spare. I would suggest you to put all the extra points in strength and you would go a little bit over 100 and this will increase the damage of your blunderbuss even higher. And with all that said guys, let's take a fast look over the combo with the blunderbuss which we should try to always use in order to burst down targets from 100 to 0. Please have in mind that this burst is really really strong hitter and it can even burst a medium target from 100 to 0 without them even knowing. As you can see it goes quite fast, of course there is some time in between the hits in which your uh, enemy can avoid or dodge the attacks but of course that's why we try to always chase the targets with either the cloud shot or net shot so we can slow them down and if they are getting even more distance we can also use the burnout from the fire staff. We can also take a look on the burst combined with the fire staff so we can get the faster reload and then apply it right after when the cooldowns are back up. As you can see it's super high damage into a low cooldown ratio if you manage to hit most of the pallets. Let's take a look on a slow motion how the combo goes step by step. First we would want to make an opener with a basic attack followed up by a net shot which will be animation cancelled. Straight away we would be able to shoot our second shot and then we would want to follow up with a claw shot. If the claw shot actually hits the target we would get an extra shot which will be the third one and then we can follow up with the Azo Trapno Blast. Of course, it's really hard to maintain and do the combo straight away from the first try, but if you practice yourself on a dummy, you would be able to hit it quite easily. Let's take a look on how does it feel whenever you pull it off in a PvP, even against a medium. As you can see everything happens super fast and if you go into the details you would even see that I missed some of my damage due to the crosshair being a little bit to the left of the target. However we have to keep in mind that this combo is extremely powerful on targets but we also need to make sure that we go out in time. Which brings us to our last point that we have to discuss related to the chaser build and this is the positioning and playstyle. With this build you have, as we saw, a really high burst potential but unfortunately you don't have that many defensive tools. That's why you need to really pick your fights and choose the right moments to attack. If you somehow end up in a fight where you are getting shot from different targets or you are getting chased down by many players and you don't have anything to protect yourself, you might end up dying. Of course, with more experience and more playtime, you would get used to the build and you would feel better with each game played. And now it's time to take closer look on the second build which I call the anti-heal. The main purpose of it is to apply disease tags to all the enemies 
at all times on the battlefield, which the combination of Pestilence, Fire Staff and Biobomb is really good too, and of course you will be the biggest nightmare of all those enemy players and mostly to their health bar. Also due to his AoE effects and medium range you can also be in a relatively safe spot and you can be out of danger for the most part of your wars or OPRs. Let's start with the build by going over the skill trees and the first skill tree that we're gonna look into is the one of the blunderbuss. The blunderbuss skill tree will not be too much different from what we usually use due to the fact that the main abilities are still there and used. Of course we're gonna go with the net shot which will provide a lot of stamina reduction to all the tanks or people that are trying to chase you and of course you can use it as an escape tool if you are getting pressured. Then of course we will go as well with the shrapnel blast as this will give us a nice boost of damage for the people that are trying to displace us or they are trying to kill us and this is extremely hard counter to all the spear attackers or even sword and shields that are going behind you to kill you. And then it's the most important part of the build and the biggest anti-heal and this is the right side of the tree and the plague splitting grenades. On this side of the tree we have the most important ability which will provide us the high amounts of plague or let's say anti-heal and this will be the grenades. If the grenades are used with their respective perk they would apply a plague splitting grenades effect which will reduce the healing of any enemy hit by the ability. Of course we would want to go for all of the passives of the ability so we can get even further damage on the targets and of course a little bit of other boosts and bonuses such as haste. Then we would also want to open few of the passive slots which will provide us also with the ultimate that reduces 50% of our cooldowns for the first ability used after 30 seconds. This means that if we make sure that we use the splitting grenades whenever this cooldown effect is ready, the cooldown of the ability will not be 26 seconds but it will go down to just 13. Let's take a look on the passives so we can see what we also get with the right side of the tree. The first one is giving us 4% cooldowns on any ability used. Then if we look a little bit under we would see that we get even further cooldowns reduced for any headshot. Of course headshot is not easy to land but when you have 6 pallets in your each basic attack you might hit here and there few headshots. Then on the right top side we see that triggering ability will provide us 3% 45 for 10 seconds. It's not the greatest bonus but still something that can be used. Then of course 10% increased damage to all targets that you didn't damage in the last 8 seconds. And then the last two passives would be the artillery which provides us 15% increased damage of our abilities for targets further than 10 meters. This bonus will most likely apply to all of the usage of splitting grenades since you're gonna want to use that from a far distance into the clumps and not being closer to them. Last but not least is one of the most important perks of this right side of tree which will provide us with 50% increased defense whenever we get down under 50% HP. This is really crucial passive for our survivability and the good part is it only has 30 seconds of cooldown. Now if we go over to the fire staff skill tree we will see a little bit of different picture than most of the fire staffs are running. On the first place we have to take a note that those three abilities are our main source of AoE damage even from bigger distance. The first one of course is the pillar of fire with its both respective passives which will provide us more damage to targets with active burning or smolder and then of course the 15% mana per hit which will keep our mana over 50 so we can have this empower of 5% always running for us. 
then of course we would want to have the two passives on top which are reducing our cooldowns and respectively giving us mana on heavy attacks. The next two abilities of course will be the Meteor Shower and the Fireball. For the Meteor Shower we would go only with two passives so we can get even a little bit of extra mana and of course every target hit into the Meteor Shower will be affected with extra smolder. We don't necessarily need the grid for it because it's a wasting of full point but if you feel that you need the grid definitely you can try it out. Then for the fireball we would go again with both passive just because it applies smolder and of course on direct hits which should be the case for all the hits uh, we will apply also 10% of max mana return and of course 7% cooldown of all your abilities. And then of course we would want to have the other passives which are providing either extra smolder, either extra damage or of course critical chance and critical damage. Rune of Helios is something that you definitely need as you are even more static and those 20% every 30 seconds will be a huge boost for your damage. On the right side you have two points left which you can use for the first Pyromania passive which gives you 10% increased damage to all targets that has burn. And then of course let it burn is a passive that will give you 10% fortify for all the times due to the fact that people will burn from your fire staff abilities 24-7. However, there is one small trick which you can use and it's to replace the let it burn with the flare passive. The flare passive will reduce your damage of heavy attacks but it will have a splash effect which will also apply disease to the targets that are nearby your main attack. And now since we took a look over the skill trees, the different abilities and passives to them Let's take a look also on the artifacts and the different armor and jewelry pieces that we're gonna need for the build. The most important thing of this build is the artifact of weapon which will be in this case the blunderbuss. This is due to the fact of the passive of the blunderbuss that provides us with a plague passive on each attack that we do to an enemy. A passive applies 5% plague but it can stack up to 3 times to a maximum of 15%. The most cool part of this build is that this passive can be applied for your other weapon as well, which means that our fire staff can also apply the plague with basic heavy attacks, light attacks and of course abilities. For a last perk of the blunderbuss, I would suggest you to take plague splitting grenades to increase even further your plague resources and the anti-heal effects towards your enemies by improving your splitting grenades to apply disease. Also note that the plague splitting grenades on the weapon will have the highest percentage of anti-heal compared to the armor. For a secondary weapon, as already mentioned, we would want to get a fire staff and for the fire staff the two most important perks in this case would be the keen and play crits. The reason for that is because when you run fire staff any build, basically if you are applying AoE you should be aiming for critical build due to the fact that you are hitting a lot of targets. Of course, running keen on the weapon makes sense to go also for plague crits which will even further apply more and more disease to all targets that are critically hit by you. Our artifact of choice for the armors will of course be the Nimbo chest piece which is in medium gear and this will provide us with extra cooldown reductions for all our abilities which we want to consistently use in order to maintain the disease over all the enemies. Of course going for this chest piece means that we have also other refreshing perks that we need to take care of so that's why it's also crucial to get four refreshings in any of your other gear pieces. Other really good perks for this build could be a fire harnessing to even increase more of your fire damage on both fire and the blunderbuss and of course health or enchanted so you can protect yourself from enemies attacks. 
And now going over to the last part of our equipment, this would be the jewelry and of course as mentioned previously guys, I believe that the Endless Thirst Artifact Earring is the way to go for this build uh, due to the fact that the Ankh and the other amulet are not really suitable for a range build. Also the Blood Drinker is not the best ring for a mage or a DPS class, so basically you are left with the Endless Thirst Earring Artifact. If we take the artifact of the Endless Thirst, we should also maybe take either Refreshing Toast or Refreshing on our last perk slot. For a ring, you would most definitely want to run Keen, Hearty and Refreshing. And of course, this Refreshing would basically mean that you fill up all four pieces of Refreshing if you use two of them in your armor slots. Last but not least, your amulet I believe should look like health, trust protection and maybe stamina recovery. But if you feel like that you have other problems, let's say with other fire mages, you can also replace the trust protection with fire protection. Of course, there are other cheaper variations than this, but I leave that to you as you should be able to choose for yourself. And now the last piece of gear, if we can call it such of course, that's the heart rune. We have to go with the bio bomb just for the fact that it will increase even further our disease and of course the plague stacks and the anti heal effect would be significantly higher. The bio bomb is an extremely high value rune which is mostly used into clumps in order to reduce the healing effects of all enemies into the cloud of poison. This is your must go rune for this build and it will give you a lot of value if you use it properly. And of course, not on last place, one of the most important things in every build in this game is the attribute points. How we should split our attribute points when we are using this build and how we should go for each and every extra stat that we get. My choice personally is to go over the attributes and pick 150 constitution in any case after the food buff. In this case it shows 110 but this is due to the fact that I don't have an active buff for constitution. Then I would want to go for the 350 intelligence due to the fact that I will get on a threshold of 350 the 10% increase of ability damage. Take a note that mainly you would be playing with the fire staff as it has a higher range than the blunderbuss and you can still apply the disease tax with everything that you use. Therefore the intelligence has a higher priority here and that's why we go with more points into intelligence. You would want to also go with 100 points of strength in case you are pressured by melees so you can do a lot of damage with your blunderbuss and of course you're gonna get the 10% physical damage increase on the blunderbuss side from the 100 strength. Of course you also benefit from the 25 and 50 thresholds since they are giving 10% attack damage to heavy and 5% light attack damage to basic attacks. If you have extra points due to the fact that your gear is all at 700 gear score, I would suggest to put all extra points into the intelligence tree as you would not be able to reach the 150 strength but you can still gain some more damage on both of your weapons if you put the points into the intelligence. And with that said guys, this is all of the gear and the necessary perks that you're gonna use for this build in order to perform at the highest heights and also to make sure that your enemies are 24-7 into, of course, disease and anti-heal effects. One thing to keep in mind is the combo, which in this build is not really specific, but in general you should be able to use all your abilities as soon as they come out of cooldown. Also make sure that you are using your bio bomb on cooldown as well as long as there is a proper clump of people in order to get the highest value from it as well. One thing you have to keep in mind though is that your plague splitting grenades should be always used whenever your passive on the right side of the tree of the blunderbuss is up. Remember that there is a 30 second cooldown and if you waste this passive with another ability you would maybe have to wait for another 30 seconds. 
keep in mind as well that while using meteor shower you are a little bit vulnerable to enemies attacks so you have to pick your position before going to apply the meteor shower effect to sum it all up i think that both builds are super viable in the meta of season 3 new world and i think that they are also really easy to pick up the chaser build would require a little bit more mechanical play from the player but of course with the time and with the experience this would come naturally. The anti heal effect build would also be super easy to pick up due to the fact that there is a little bit of aiming and a lot of bit of clumps. So therefore please go and try those builds out guys and let me know in the comments below how would you feel with them. Of course, if you have further questions or you want to discuss something, even other builds or those that are already presented, please make sure that you come in my Discord community channel where we discuss everything related to New World but not only. Also, if you want to catch me live, you can do that by following the channel on Kick, where we stream almost daily. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel and I will see you on the next one.